Oh, after that neck injury, this heat therapy has been a lifesaver for my neck. I can finally turn without it hurting. But how do you know if heat therapy or cold therapy is right for you? Follow along to learn. Welcome or welcome back. Dr. Craig Lindell and here at Prehab, we teach you how to take control of your own health. Today, we're talking about heat and cold therapy. Specifically, why would you choose one versus the other? And more importantly, how to make the right choice at the right time. Along the way, we're gonna educate you as to what we use with our patients and clients at Prehab HQ, and of course, what we like to use with ourselves. Let's dive into it. But first, we gotta give an urgent public service announcement. If you were the Google search physical therapy, and you went far enough on certain pages, or if you were to ask your parents what physical therapy is, guess what they would say? Hot packs and cold packs? We know that you know better, at least we hope, but physical therapy is so much more than hot packs and cold packs. It's gonna take time to move on from this stereotype linked with the profession, but that's why we're here today to educate you. Up first, we got cold therapy. Let's start with the benefits. Cold therapy can actually help with decreasing swelling and inflammation via blood vessel constriction. We're talking about acute injuries when we're talking about swelling and inflammation. So say that you tweak your ankle, you're dealing with an ankle sprain. Typically we throw ice right on that acute injury because that's going to help with constricting blood vessels. Constricting those blood vessels is going to help with swelling and inflammation because the fluid can't get through, the blood vessels are constricted, and that's actually going to help with secondary damage from that acute injury. So that's why it's so common to be used in practice. And remember, this really only applies to an acute injury. It's really important to remember that as we'll talk about it again later on. Probably the biggest benefit of cold therapy is going to be decreasing pain via this analgesic effect, meaning pain relieving effect. Cold therapy not only constricts blood vessels, but it also slows down nerve conduction. And remember, pain is a sensation from our nervous system. So getting that nerve conduction velocity to slow down, we experience less pain. And then of course, that's gonna be the story of the entire video. It is most effective when combined with exercise for managing acute injuries, such as an ankle sprain, right? Just icing your injury is not gonna get you to the finish line. You gotta do way more than that. All right, let's talk about the best time to use cold therapy. Right after exercise, or on its own. You're cooling your body down. You're getting things cold. It's gonna feel stiff. You're not gonna to wanna to move it. You're not gonna be able to feel it really well. We're talking about blood vessel as well as nerve conduction, decreasing velocity, constriction. So do it after exercise. Don't do it before you go in the field right after strenuous exercise if you're going for performance recovery. If we're talking about sports, you're in the playoffs, you're in a tournament, you have to perform the following day. Well, remember, cold therapy, it actually helps with decreasing inflammation. It can help with speeding up muscle recovery. So when we're talking about pure performance, you need to get back and perform as fast as possible. Doing something like cold water immersion is going to be great We'll talk about that in a bit. And then of course, as needed for pain management, whether it's after an injury or surgery, it's a great way to manage pain and especially avoid medications. Common mistakes with cold therapy, this is going to be the same story when we're talking about heat therapy, using it at the wrong time or for the wrong reasons. Far too often, people message us, they reach out to us, we see them in person, they're chronically using ice for chronic pain and they think that it's helping with decreasing swelling, decreasing inflammation. It's hard to say that those things are happening when we're talking about chronic issues. If you sprained your ankle a month ago and you're still icing your ankle, I'd probably tell you to stop icing your ankle because the reality is there's other things that we need to be working on and we're past the acute injury phase. Now, interference with long-term training goals. If you need to get back and play in a game tomorrow, ice after today's game, that's fine, but if you want to build muscle, there is evidence to support that, hey, chronic frequent cold water immersion after exercising can actually blunt muscle hypertrophy because you're affecting the cellular activity 
that's related to muscle hypertrophy. You can still get strong, you can still perform if you do cold water immersion after exercising, strenuous exercise performance, you name it. But if you're going for muscle hypertrophy, getting those gains, you want to avoid cold water immersion. And we'll talk about cold showers later. That's a popular question as well. And then last but not least, lack of tissue depth. If I take a bag of ice, frozen bag of veggies, throw it on my knee, thinking that I'm gonna get real deep down into the joint, or if I do it on my back, hoping to get real deep down towards my spine, it's hard to say that topical cold therapy is going to accomplish that. Okay, heat up next. Up next, we got heat therapy. Let's begin with the benefits. Common knowledge here. Heat therapy can help with improving circulation as well as improving blood flow. The more blood flow that we can get to body tissues, especially body tissues that are in pain or ones that are trying to heal, the better. Muscles get a ton of blood flow. So that's why they're pretty good at healing on their own. But if we're talking about ligaments, tendons, other small body tissue areas that don't get great blood flow, well, heat therapy can be great for these things. Also common knowledge, heat therapy can increase body temperature. We take this one for granted, but simply increasing body temperature is actually a great way to help prevent injuries when you're about to exercise or going into an activity. Heat therapy may also decrease pain and provide relaxation to muscles and other body tissues, which can help with stiffness. So heat, very common practice to be used when someone is feeling stiff. You know, the first thing when you wake up in the morning, it's like, oh, you try to move, oh, I feel stiff. Let me get my body warm with like a hot shower or take advantage of a heat pack or just go for a walk. This, is all, this all goes back to increasing body temperature. Now, when is the best time to use heat therapy? Typically before exercise. If I'm going to dive into a workout, if I'm about to jump on the field and play a sport, I wanna increase my body temperature. I wanna get more blood flow and circulation going to my muscles and all the working tissues in my body. It's going to help facilitate a warm up. You can use it as a mode of recovery on its own. We're gonna be diving into this a little bit later. What are different ways that you can take advantage of heat therapy where it's basically getting the same sweat, if not a better sweat than exercising. And then as needed for pain and stiffness management when dealing with subacute and chronic conditions. So with cold therapy, it's best used right after exercise, right after an injury. You go down, you twist your ankle, get ice on that right away, use ice for the first 48 hours. But then if we're dealing with chronic things or it's been a week or two, things are feeling stiff, or maybe you have a condition where you deal with chronic stiffness or elder aging adults dealing with arthritis, you name it, they benefit from getting their body temperature up and getting things moving. This is where heat comes into play and it can be used and it's a cheap, affordable modality. Now, let's talk about the common mistakes. Using it again at the wrong times or wrong reasons. Thinking it will resolve chronic issues. Again, heat alone will never get you to the finish line. Heat is going to be best when it is paired with exercise and movement. Same thing for cold therapy. If you're using heat therapy with acute injuries, with active inflammation and swelling, that's a no-go. Remember, you twist your ankle, you cause an injury, you want to vasoconstrict those blood vessels so that you limit the amount of inflammation and swelling that's going to that area to limit secondary damage. It's like a paper cut. You get a paper cut, just there hurts, but then after a day or so, all the area around it is really sensitive. That's called secondary damage from the active inflammation that went to that cut. So that's why ice, cold therapy helps with that. You want to avoid heat therapy with active inflammation and swelling. Now we haven't talked about contrast therapy where you do heat followed by cold, and then you repeat that cycle. That can help with active inflammation and swelling. But in this scenario, we're talking about isolated heat therapy. I wouldn't want you to use it with active inflammation and swelling that is acute. Last but not least, thinking it will have an effect on deep tissue layers. Remember, not all heat therapy is created equal, just like cold therapy. We will dive into this more in a little bit, but if you're just using an ice pack, thinking that's gonna get deep down into the layers, you're gonna need a stronger heat source. Okay, let's dive into how we use heat and cold therapy here at Prehab HQ. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. What are some of the easiest and best ways to incorporate heat and cold therapy on your own? We're gonna begin with heat. Number one, exercise. 
simply move your body. Riding a bike, using a rower, going for a walk, going for a jog, doing some sort of dynamic warm-up movement is going to be one of the best ways to increase body temperature, increase circulation, and increase blood flow. You can do it with layers if you're feeling cold, if you feel like you need to help trap the heat, so cover as much skin as you can and move. You can also supplement with something like a heat pack. Also, you can take advantage of percussion therapy. We use the Theraguns. That's an easy way to help increase circulation as well as blood flow to a specific targeted area. Now, if you want to experiment with more advanced heat therapies that can provide added benefits, you should check out infrared heat. Here at the office, we have the My High Portable Infrared Sauna Blanket that you can use in your own home. The product uses the exact same infrared heating as an infrared sauna, but in a blanket style wrap. It uses what is called far infrared light, which is the only kind of infrared light capable of raising your core temperature in a way that simulates the heat stress of traditional saunas and exercise. This level of heat is going to promote a lot of healing properties, including cellular repair, improved blood circulation, and improved muscle recovery. In addition, I love it as part of my recovery routine as this is me time to calm my body and my mind either prior to a busy day or at the end of the day to help get a good night rest. As you can see, it is extremely effective at making you break a sweat, which flat out makes you feel good and is great for your skin health. Be sure to check out the link in the description for a special discount to our prehab audience. All right, what about cold therapy? What are some of the easy, practical ways to take advantage of cold therapy on your own? Ice packs. You grew up, you fell on the ground, your parents would hand you a bag of ice, say throw it on there and you'll feel better. So a bag of ice, a frozen bag of veggies, whatever you have access to is one of the easiest ways to implement cold therapy. Be sure to put something in between the cold therapy and your skin, like a towel, and then put it on there. Again, remember, this is going to be great when we're dealing with acute injuries or right after a big surgery, you name it, we're trying to manage the pain or manage acute inflammation and swelling. Another popular thing outside of ice packs is cold showers. So there's a lot of hype and a lot of evidence that is emerging when it comes to the topic of cold showers. It's being said that, hey, this can help with immune health. This can help with chronic stress. More importantly, it can help with vascular health. We love cold showers. We got a shower set up here. Mike and I were taking advantage of it after exercising or first thing in the morning. Just keep in mind what we spoke about earlier. As long as you're not going for long-term hypertrophy, then it's okay to do a cold shower after exercising. And remember, a cold shower is different than cold water immersion, and you're only doing it typically for a few minutes, so either start your day with it if you're going for some of the benefits that I just mentioned, or do it right after a workout. I personally like to do it right after a hard workout. I can just tolerate it better, but it's worth trying, it's super affordable, and almost every single person has access to it. All right, so, whoa, what happened to my shirt and my beard? It's like I'm in the hot tub time machine. All right, in all seriousness, thank you for tuning in. I hope that you learned a few things about hot therapy and cold therapy when it comes to dealing with pain and managing injuries. Remember, at the end of the day, no matter what modality you go with, combining it with movement is going to give you the best bang for your buck. With that being said, be sure to head to our website, check out our shop where you're going to find all the products featured in this video and be sure to take advantage of that My High Infrared Sauna Blanket deal. Okay, until next time. Hey Prehabbers, if you enjoyed our content, go ahead, like and subscribe. Or better yet, head over to our website in the description below and check out the dozens of programs that we've created to help you take control of your health today. <laughs>